So what are dark factories? Well, they're not the factories that make that expensive chocolate, but they are in fact more of a, well, at least until recently, a sort of a concept. The first industrial revolution really changed the way things are manufactured. Other revolutions have happened since then, and one of the latest ones is supposedly this dark factory concept. It's essentially a fully automated factory that really doesn't have any humans in it. So you can run the factory theoretically in the dark, effectively, without the heating, air conditioning, other environmental stuff that workers would need. So it's all going to be robotics, AI, that kind of thing. And I was researching this, and there's an article from a couple of years ago uh, in 2022, which is talking about their largely theoretical, that kind of thing. Um, there are factories where there are robots, obviously. We have, we have had robot automation in car factories for some years, and there are other places where they are, have, you know, robot assistants to do things on production lines. This is more of the concept where it's fully automated. It really essentially dispenses with the need for human workers, which is, you know, a big deal. But going from the, the theoretical and the conceptual of a few years ago, there are already some working, mostly dark factories. Um, Philips, the, the Dutch company, has implemented dark factory concepts in its electric razor production. Their facility employs only nine humans as quality assessors to supervise the process with 128 robots handle most of the manufacturing. Uh, FANUC, or F-A-N-U-C, I don't know how you pronounce that, a Japanese robotics manufacturer is considered to be one of the pioneers in implementing this sort of lights-out manufacture. Since 2001, FANUC has been using robots to build other robots in a facility that can operate for up to 30 days without humans really being involved. The latest one I saw is from uh, Xiaomi in China, has a smart factory in Beijing that operates as a dark factory. The Xiaomi factory produces smartphones, as I said, and it automates without human intervention the factory employees advanced robotics, artificial intelligence, and machi other machine learning technologies to manufacture the entire production process autonomously. So it's a real dark factory. So what does this concept do for employment? I mean, this is in China where, you know, workers are pretty cheap, and yet they're still going with this. What about in other countries where workers are not particularly cheap, isn't this even more of an incentive for if this can be, you know, actually a proven technology, if it actually works on some kind of scale that would produce, because there's going to be a tremendous capital outlay for this kind of factory. You've got to get all the robotics, the electronics, the computers, the programming. I mean, you're not paying for the benefits for employees or for sick time or insurance or anything like that. So there must be a financial incentive to do it, I guess. But what does that do to the workforce? I mean, you can only retrain so many people to do so many things. You can retrain some of them to work in the, you know, support the robot, robotics and the computing part of it, the AI, I guess. But, you know, if you take a thousand workers, not too many of them are going to be able to do that. And then what, what do you do with the rest? This is one of the things that worries me about the, the AI slash robotics frenzy that we seem to be in right now. I mean, to take it to its logical sort of conclusion, we have basically robots and AI doing pretty much everything. And then the rest of it just sitting around doing what? Contemplating our navels? I mean, people talk about the Star Trek economy, where it's the, the sort of pie in the sky by and by, everybody there's no need for money. Everybody just does sort of what they want to do. They better themselves and that kind of thing. And that's wonderful as a concept. But getting from here to there seems like a really big problem I don't think many people have thought about. One of the interim steps is you've probably heard the concept of UBI, Universal Basic Income, where people get paid a sort of a stipend just to exist. In effect, what does that do to people? 
how does that affect quality of life, aspirational choices, that kind of thing? Does it just make a bunch of puddings that lay around and don't do anything all day? I don't know what, how that works with people. I don't think people, I mean, it's, it's horrible to have to struggle and strive to survive. But on the other hand, you know, you know, sponsored indolence doesn't seem to be much of a way to, to go either. When people talk about universal basic income, they, they always seem to hedge around the, the concept of, well, where does the money come from to pay the income for these people who aren't working? People sort of talk around it and make generalizations, but they don't really seem to come up with an answer. It seems to be, it's going to have to be something very radically different from what we see and experience today. And I don't know what that is. I don't know what that looks like. And I don't know if it's good. Um, but these dark factories are starting to pop up. There's, you know, a few of them, as I mentioned, in operation now or ramping up to be in operation. So where do we go from here? You know, you can see the sort of happy, happy rainbow type outlook where it's, as I said, like a Star Trek type economy. You can also see the other side of it where it gets back into sort of like serfdom. If you think back a few years ago, they had the big conference in Davros where they had all the billionaires gathering together deciding what to do. And one of the slogans was the, uh, you'll own nothing and be happy. Is that what we're heading for? I don't know if I like that. I mean, if, it, if you are somebody who's homeless right now, certainly that's wonderful. That, that's a wonderful upgrade for you. But to other people who enjoy doing their thing and just living their own life, does that not seem kind of awful? What do you folks think? So as usual, I have links down below. If you want to make a comment, please do so. I'd be glad to hear if anybody has any sort of forward-looking ideas on any of this or links to anything that would, would help me understand how this might work. I just kind of don't see it, but maybe I'm just old and stodgy and not, not thinking clearly enough in a sort of a futuristic way. Anyway, let me know. Till next time, take care.